This meeting is now called to order. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Trustee Williams. Trustee Williams. Trustee Berlant. Oh, here. Sorry. Here. Trustee Brooks. Present. Trustee Jenkins. Present. Trustee Franklin. Present. Trustee Bowen. Present. Trustee McMullen. Present. Mayor Rubin. Here. Stand for the pledge of allegiance. Is there a motion for approval of the minutes? Um, uh, Mayor? Yes. Yeah. I didn't see the minutes come. So if everyone is in that same situation that I'm in, is that I would like to table until the next regular board meeting. Okay, there's a motion to table there. Second. second. Motion to table by Trustee Cook, second by Trustee Williams. Questions? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Trustee Williams? Both side. Trustee Brooks. Both side. Trustee Jenkins. Both side. Trustee Franklin. Both side. Trustee Bolden. Both side. Trustee McMullen. Both side. Mayor Rivera. Both sides to table. Our public, our general public comments. John David Speedway. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, I was here to talk about the Speedway here in town that we are um, asking for video gaming. Um, I and mean, I did want to let everybody know a little bit about some of the improvements that we have done so far at that location. Um, as far as the outside goes, we have trimmed the trees to improve the visibility in the southeast corner of the uh, property. Um, we've refreshed the mulch and gravel, removed a few of the broken parking blocks in the parking lot. Um, we also installed a five-foot circular garden around the ID sign on the corner and installed a few decorative grasses and bushes. Um, we have power washed the parking lot, including the gas canisters and parking areas. And we are assessing the light poles outside to add additional lighting because I know some visibility was of a concern. And then as far as the inside goes, we have uh, cleaned up the ceiling vents, um, installed high-capacity flush toilets, um, we are experiencing a few other issues with some of the sewage, but we are working on getting that fixed um, permanently. And if the uh, council keeps uh, uh, giving us ideas for improvements that they'd like to see at the site, we are definitely open to hearing that and making um, improvements as needed. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Just uh, which which speed? Check, check. Which speedway did you do this at? We, the one at uh, the corner here at uh, Governor's. Governor's. Yep. Did you do anything at Western? I just wanted to make sure that on the home, on my way home from practice, it looked a little, little bit brighter, but I just want to make sure it wasn't because I was out there practicing in the dark. No, the other location, we have not done anything at this time. Okay, just check it. Uh, I appreciate the uh, improvements and uh, they are well documented and uh, it's just a start. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I ask a question? I'd like to know why haven't you done the yellow? Why didn't you do both of okay. them? Um, we're actually looking to get video gaming at the one location to start and if it generates revenue we would look to add it to the second site. John, I would be specific on it. Give us the feedback on that. Other one you got feedback Are, is there other. specific things you'd like to see at that second location? Same thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're the same. Yeah. If if we can just the biggest coffee test test test. The big boy. I just this Hello. Test. I'll just use Liz mic for a second here. Um, the biggest thing is that we keep getting complaints that both speedways, people want to see improvement on both of them. And what we want you to understand is that when they see that both speedways seem like uh, you all are putting very much effort into it, that 
you know, the positive feedback from us, then yes. I mean, I mean, if you just put the same type of energy that you're putting into this one, because I'm going to be honest, the power washing, and I just, my colleague here, I just asked him, like, did, did you see power washing? Because I didn't see it at Western. And I'll be honest, it looks, the one, the reason why I keep saying Western is because that's like our key traffic for those in town. And when they see it, I'm going to be honest, when we see our, our constituents, they always say, you know, what are you going to do about that speedway? So if you could just like clean that one up to a little bit, I'm, that's all we're asking. We're not asking for anything big, just make us equal to what we see over on the speedway in Crete. That's all we're asking. Equal. That's all we're asking is to be equal to what we see in the other towns. So I don't know if you have to make management do it or something because I'm going to be honest. I just had a conversation when I had left the mayor's office with our code enforcement in reference to our family dollar. dollar. That's ridiculous. And so we are down on their necks and we sent letters to management to try to get them to do what's right so that the residents of University Park can say that, you know, hey, we're on the right path. We're looking the same way as Crete, Moni, Park Forest, and all the surrounding towns. It just seems like once they get to University Park, they, they're just used to this dirty and dark. And we don't want that. That's not a reflection of those who work here and have homes here. So, thank you. Thank you. I, and I will, Mayor, you did send a, I believe it was uh, uh, Miss Claudia did send an email. I apologize that I did not send my reply. I did send some trustees since the reply. Mine is about minor. And actually everything that you just said that you wanted to do at, or that you did do at that one is the same one that I would like to see at the Western, but I had been so busy, um, but I will send my reply. I want to get it, get it uh, done right away. Thank you. Okay. That's it. Mildred Morgan. Thank you, Mr. I have to address this right now while it's fresh on my mind. But why are we begging them to clean up the speedways? Why, well, you clean up over here, but you haven't cleaned up over here. It seems like you just want the gaming machines over there, and you're not going to clean up over here. Once you get the gaming machines, then here we go again. Got to beg you again. I don't understand that. <sighs> okay. I don't understand it. I really don't. Um, <clears throat> we'll talk about a house that's right there on uh, Western, about a little way down going north of Western. There's a garbage can that sits literally in the middle of, almost in the street, in the, almost in the middle of the street. In the street, there's tons of garbage that's always there. Uh, and nobody seems to be interested in it. All right, I learned that it's uh, um, unincorporated um, Cretan. And when I call the Sheriff's Department, when I call everybody, when I call our department, everybody, you know, can nothing be done. Nothing, nothing can be done about that. That is a reflection on University Park. Because as anyone entered into the Village of University Park, you don't know whether it's unincorporated creek, whether it's University Park, and I don't hear anybody, residents, nor trustees, or the board, saying anything about that. I'm quite disturbed about that. Also, I want to thank uh, Public uh, Works, uh, specifically, um, um, Jerry and Sam for putting the light back on Farm View and Regal Farm. They did a wonderful job after many, 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 almost over years, a couple of years of that light being out. Uh, the children come out from um, um, practicing 
and they come down uh, Dark Street. I'm sitting out watching for the children so that nothing happens, they don't get hit or anything. But those men work diligently to get that light back on under Mr. Durrell, the uh, director, and I'm very, very happy about that. The people on Regal Farm is very, very happy about that. Um, just wanted to say thank you, Mr. Durrell, and uh, your guys, they are the greatest. Uh, also want to, now here's a bag. I'm begging. I'm begging you guys. They need some help. They need some help. Public Works need some workers. They're just right now public. That's it. It's not work. Girls. But they need some workers. Another thing, IRA right, is important. All right, Mr. Morgan, we got, we got, we got, we got, to, we got to treat everybody. I got a question. There's only a couple. IRA, got to say this. IRA report. We need to know about the IRA. I know you knew, but I'm sharp enough, I'm sure that you uh, have learned it. We need to know about IRA report. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor. We need to know uh, the whereabouts of this garbage can so that we can do something about it. Oh, the animal hospital. Just before you get She wanted to know the address. Oh, it's right before south. Okay. All right. Yes, trustee. Ms. Miller, before you sit down, I just want to take time to thank you for all of the work you're doing in this community with cleaning out our flower pots throughout our community. She does this just diligently every, all seasons, and I just want to take the time yes, to really, truly, from my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Second that motion. Okay, that takes, that's it for our public uh, comments. Short, short list this morning. Um, yes. Are we going to do that now, manager? Pardon? Uh, well, are we going to do this now? What? Uh, uh, she has two officers. She's going to get sworn in. If they're ready now, let's we'll do it right now. Or oh, we can go to the items on there. Are they close by? I, I, I'll have them come right over. And you can just whatever. Okay, we'll start on the items. Okay. Item one, item F, 1A, third reading, and third reading is ordinance of the Village of University Park Amendment, Part 10, Title 6, Chapter 1060, Section 1060 06 of the Village of University Park Code of Ordinance. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Trustee Brooks. Second. Second by Trustee Williams. Questions? Yes, Mayor. Um, on this, this for those who don't know, uh, this is the ordinance regulating garbage cans. And um, um, so, so you know, because sometimes people say they don't know what we're talking about up here. Um, if my colleagues can turn to page three, section two, D. Um, I just want to express to all of them, this is what I ran into when talking to the constituents in the, in, in the community. And I, I am one of them. I will say I do not leave my garbage cans out front, uh, but I pull it to the side of the house. But let me read off so that the residents will understand um, what I'm just, um, before we go into the discussion. But what I just read off on uh, page three, section two D, all garbage refuge recycling can, uh, containers shall be, should not be stored in the front yards on non-trash days, all garbage refuge a uh, recycling container shall be stored behind a privacy fence or out of view from the curbside. So, um, Attorney Miller was here and we never got a chance 
uh, Attorney Miller was going to try to find out if he can find different wording, but um, this is a third reading, and I'm just going to be honest on my decision tonight is that uh, there are some residents who it's impossible for them to pull their cans, they don't have a privacy fence or pull their cans. And actually, if you have the square footage of a ranch house that is below uh, 1,500 square feet, your garbage can, and you don't have a basement, it's a ranch level, you can't pull it around, and depending actually on the size of the house, you can't pull it around. This ordinance, even if you pull it on the side, and I would have to say that I would be in violation right now, but uh, that was one reason why we went from just anybody having any old garbage cans to having the company that pick up our garbage cans to supply us so that it would control and have the village in a uniform manner of when we dispose of our garbage. And I can see us trying to regulate this, but also at the same time, I think uh, as a legislator uh, and a person of law enforcement, or of course a person who enforce laws, uh, this would put a lot of people, especially senior citizens, who do take the can, if you notice, uh, some of them take those garbage cans and they line them up in the front, but they'll line them up in front on the side of their garage so that they can come in because those are some pretty big cans. That's why they gave it to us. Those are some pretty huge cans, so many people cannot put it into their garage. So I just want to express my interaction to those. Um, some of them know that it is indeed on the uh, agenda tonight, but um, I can't support it because uh, the fact that um, out of view from the curbside is just unfortunate by the constructions of our houses and in this community of us not having many fences, um, it would put a lot of residents uh, into a bind. And um, unless you know someone asked to table this and we revisit it with the language, would Attorney Miller return? Uh, if this is an up and down vote tonight, I'm just going to be honest. I can't support it. As you know, the, the, our garbage contract actually ends April 1st. And what is happening prior to that, an RFP has to be developed, and that's what I'm trying to do now, develop an RFP. You started out supply citizens with, and you stopped. But I think you were probably trying to say that you, if we could do an RFP where the supplier uh, you stop. Is that what he's, he's no, saying? No, no ma'am. It, it was a, uh, no, no, that was, uh, and I'm sorry, I was uh, a little, uh, I was trying to go back to why we had got big cans, uh, because at one point we never had um, garbage. We had to use, buy our own, whether it was from Menards or anywhere else. But because they were just taking, some people had garbage just literally sitting in front of the garage or sides of the house. Um, the trash company, uh, back when the mayor was the trustee, they all agreed that this company supplies us with garbage cans so that the village would look more uniform when it comes to uh, disposing of the garbage throughout the village. Trustee, I understand that. I understood everything you said, but what I was trying to say, just let me make this comment to you. For those people that, in fact, do not have the space to uh, relocate it or make it not visible from the streetscape, if the um, refuge company were to provide some source of a privacy that will allow them to do it, because what is happening is one case that's pending right now where a developer feels that since the, the board has tabled it, they don't have to comply, and they're exposing all this garbage to the, the main thoroughfare. But I'm saying if we can somehow get these refuge company to provide you with a portable uh, piece to obstruct the vision, or in some instances, 
people have a, a partial fence or something, would something like that be applicable? We can write that in the RFP that way. The ones that really need to adhere to that could be made applicable. We have uh, apartment buildings where garbage is just totally ridiculous. And we want that to be settled. But it's like if we do it for one, we have to do it for all. But if we put it in the RFP, I do believe that those that have that problem, we could be assured that they get some kind of privacy from that. Well, that's an option. Yes. Um, well, and when, when is that coming up in April? April 1. Okay. Uh, Mayor, uh, Board of Trustees, uh, and I do trust uh, that the uh, Madam, Madam Village Manager will take care of this. I just want to make a motion because I do, if, they, if this is going to happen, I feel that can we make a motion to uh, just table this until she does the RFP and then we come back forward and then pass this? Well, I, I guess what the problem is, the recommendation from code enforcement is coming that limits their ability to collect the fines that are that are due throughout the town. So that, that's that's what that's where the problem comes in is the enforcement because others aren't in compliant with it because there is no enforcement behind it because we're like in the middle. Am I right, manager? Yeah. And and trustee, I do believe we can get this out of this. There are other towns that have it, these refuge companies do in fact provide that in there. It's a very common thing that local municipalities do. And I can assure that I will put it in there. And right. whoever accepts it, they will have to do it. I'm, I'm fine with what you're saying, Madam Village Manager, but I'm saying as a legislator, we're about to pass something where we're, we have to be in compliance or that once we pass this, there are many who store their garbage cans in the front on the garbage in the by, by the garage and on the side of the garage that are within curb's view of curbside. That is my point tonight. And I'm saying is that uh, the Madam Village Manager is going to put something in the RFP to make sure that we won't have that problem. And I'm just asking for a delay before we pass this law, law, that that we have, that she's going to do her job, but before, as legislator, we need to be considerate about what we're about to do and if it's on the books. And I mean, if someone right now, the very same constituents that store their cans in the front, if they receive a citation tomorrow, it will be a legal ticket. But if it's when Madam Village Manager uh, puts in an RFP and we sit there and the garbage company does what they're supposed to, and even then, if when we pass it, it's in someone's sight, it's not in violation because Madam Village Manager put it in the RFP. So I just want everyone to take understand as legislators what we're, we're about to do. And again, I think everyone up here is on board when it says something for the beautification of the village that we all in agreement and it's going to pass. But when it comes to those residents such as seniors and so forth, at this moment before we pass it, that you know we make sure hold off until our, our, our village manager uh, handles her job and then we pass it into law. Shirley, Trustee Bolt, you're looking at me a little confused. I want to make sure. No, I'm not confused. Oh, you're not? I am not confused. Okay. Didn't we have this discussion before? Yes, and Miller was supposed to correct the language, and he's not here unless we want to wait to, um, and I want to be honest, if we, unless we want to wait to a table until uh, Attorney Miller comes back and we can take care of it in the meeting of the cow in two weeks. Okay, that, well, that's okay, too, because I yeah. thought you wanted to hear, I'm going to hear, that yeah. you want to hold on to April 1st, and, and I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't go along with that. Right. And my other concern was, um, who's going to enforce it, but you already said code, code enforcement. enforcement. What? Right. So meanwhile, if this is, we don't take care of this today and wait two weeks, they can still, are, are they doing fines now for, um, for the garbage cans being out front? They, are, are they fining the people now? No. 
to my understanding, they're doing everything with uh, like uh, over here, but this would be into the residence because this is what it reads in the ordinance. I'm going strictly up what I'm reading in front of me. Correct. This is uh, Madam Village Manager. This would be for in reference to village wide for the residents. Correct. Residents, commercial, all of the above. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, right. Yeah. And I'm gonna be honest. I did talk, um, um, Trustee. I did talk to Miller. Uh, he will be our regular attorney starting all board meetings, if I'm not correct, Mayor, the next next month. So, look, I was just given the options. Uh, I'm just tossing out options, but if we can table so that Mr. Miller can correct what he said he would do in it, and let's move, and then we can pass it. Uh, Next month. Okay. How about yeah, that? In, in the minutes is what we, what the wording should be. Yeah. If we, we you know what the wording should be. Yes. Because what this says. Yes, because this was not out of view of from her side. He said he was going to change it up so that it would not affect those who don't have a privacy fence or other sort. But I'm glad that uh, Madam Village Manager says that she she can help us also with that option. Now, let's be honest, my grass is dead on the side of the house from the can. So we can make a motion so that the, the, the lawyer can just take a look at it. Now, honestly, if I can call them. I tell you, I tell you what, trustees. How about if we pass the legislation, give them a 30-day grace period, that way we can amend the language and no enforcement can take place. That sounds good. That sounds good. Makes sense to amend it not tonight in the meeting. And he we'll, we'll pass the ordinance, no enforcement, give him a 30 day grace period, mm -hmm. and then there we'll change the language. Then, after that language change is done, then they can start being enforced. Okay, and meanwhile, then we can still start continuing fines. Right, right. What are all the fines for that? Is it good? I don't know off the top of my head, there's no one here from code enforcement. So, yeah. oh, go ahead, man. I just thank you. Right, help, help me with that again, Mayor. I'm, I'm a little lost. Okay. You want to pass it? Pass, pass it, no enforcement, give it a 30 day grace period, then amend it with the language, then enforcement starts. Amend it with the language, so that means it would have to come back to the agenda? No. It would have to come back to the agenda, we would have to amend it. If you amend it, it I have, Yeah, I have to change the amendment back on the agenda, yes. Right. So, so, so we, I'm right now, I'm worried about the residents and what we're doing. And I understand we want to enforce it, but if we're going to do it, do it right. Because that's what I want to do, make sure we do it, do it right. Can I make a suggestion that we give the attorney 30 days? We kind of got approximately 40 days. There's something heavy that's really pending. That's really pending. We give the, the, uh, the attorney a minimum of 30 days. 30 days to come back at the, the appropriate CMW and then the board meeting and pass it after the language is amended. It still would give us an opportunity to create an RFP and get it out and get it out to the board before April 1. So how about us? You say you need this for the RFP? Yes, but yeah. so that, that'll give us an opportunity to talk with the attorney to understand you all's concerns and that what we will do in terms of the, uh, the RAP for the uh, board. The attorney will do it first before you pass. Council, you here. Can you help me on that uh, before I cast my vote? We can pass this and Attorney Miller can have a timeline to review this and amend it. It's not that you're giving the attorney a timeline to amend it. It's just you're going to amend it within 30 days. Um, I've made the note. I will talk with Joe tomorrow, um, and then he can make the amendment and have it at your next meeting. You have a meeting in two weeks. That's the committee meeting. That's the meeting of the whole. And then the action meeting can be waived. Well, I, I, I feel it. Two weeks won't bother. I mean, it's not like it's not a, to me. It's, it's not. To me, I just, I, 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 I just feel that we should 
table to the committee to hold. I'll, I'll be talking to the attorney within the two weeks um, um, so that we can get this done. You know, I, I, that's just my, that's the position I'm gonna stand. I, I, if it doesn't, if I don't get a second motion, that's fine, but I would like a motion to table to the committee to hold so right. we can talk to Attorney there, Miller. There's a motion by Trustee Books to table this legislation. Is there a second? Second by Trustee Bowling. Roll call. This is to table, Madam Clerk. To the committee to, Until uh, this, the committee meeting. Trustee Williams? Trustee Brooks? Both sides. Trustee Jenkins? Both no. Trustee Franklin? Both sides. Trustee Bowling? Both sides. Trustee McMullen? Both sides. Mayor Rudin? Both sides of the table. Okay. Okay. Let's get this done though, because we've been dealing with this for a long time now. I, now, I agree, man. Yeah, I agree. And the whole goal is to ensure that we have a clean community when people come back and it's not garbage around all throughout the town. <coughs> all right, all right, guys, we got that one. So now we're going to take the time out, um, Chief, and let's go out and do our swearing in. Officer. 
of the University Park Police Department. Of the, of the University, University Park Police Department. In the Village of University Park. In the Village of University Park. Counties of Will and Cook. Counties of Will and Cook. Illinois. Illinois. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that, that I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office. Of the office. Of, the office. of police officer. Of police officer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. You all have been warned. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
Item new item F two A first second and third reading and ordinance amending part eight title two chapter eight oh four section eight oh four zero six of the village of University Park Code of Ordinances license fees. Is there a motion? So moved. by Trustee second. Brooks, second by Trustee Franklin. Both sides. Item F two B, first, second, and third readings, ordinance approved and authorizes the execution of a long term lease agreement for the property commonly referred to as Unit Twenty Eight Town Center Drive, University Park, Illinois six zero four eight four. Next clip barber shop. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. second. Moved by Trustee Brooks. Second by Trustee. Uh, yes, moved by Trustee Brooks. Second by Trustee Bowden. Question for, question for council. Go ahead, trustee. Um, council, shouldn't uh, I know you didn't write this agreement? Um, should uh, if the if for the trustees to follow me, turn to page three under section three. Um, when it goes down to the village president hereby authorized to execute and the village clerk is to hereby authorize and to attest to the lease agreement substantially in the such form, such lease agreement, which is attached here as to exhibit A, with such char uh, changes therein shall be approved by the village attorney and officials. Um, should it read with such uh, with such non-material changes, would that would that be appropriate in there? I think the word changes. I'm sorry. I think the word change is fine. So if it's that's anything, not unusual. What what that's doing is to make sure that the attorney gets a chance to read it before it gets signed. Okay. Okay. We've done that in many in many situations before. It's it just adds another safeguard of security for the. Uh, village. Okay, but but the basics that we got in here, which I know we're gonna. He's not gonna change it. Okay, all no. right. I, I just didn't want the. the it's in the wiggle room. If there's if there if there's something not written correctly, to fix it. That's all. Okay, all right. Um, I yield my time here. Roll. roll. Anybody else? Roll call. Trustee Williams. Both side. Trustee Brooks. Both side. Trustee Jenkins? Vote tie. Trustee Franklin? Vote tie. Trustee Bolden? Vote tie. Trustee McMullen? Vote tie. Mayor Rudez? Vote tie. Welcome to New Cuts Barbershop. All right. Item F2C, first, second, and third reading, an ordinance approving and authorizing the execution of a long term lease agreement for the property, property commonly referred to as Unit 30, Town Center Drive, Illinois. 604-84-2800, Sugar Shack. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Trustee Brooks. Second. Second by Trustee McMullen. Questions? Roll call. Trustee Williams. Both side. Trustee Brooks. Both side. Trustee Jenkins. Both side. Trustee Franklin. Both side. Trustee Bolden. Both side. Trustee McMullen. Both side. Mayor Ruiz. Both side. Looking forward to a Sugar Shack. Yeah. All right. 
<laughs> Item F2D, first, first, second, and third readings in order to uh, amending Part 8, Title 2, Chapter 808, Section 807-07 of the Village of University Park Code of Ordinance. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Brooks, second by Trustee McMullen. Questions? Yes, uh, Mayor and Board of Trustees, if you can turn to page, 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 page three. Um, I, I just want to actually make a point. I, I thought, at least on my point, um, when we asked uh, the extension of the two liquor license, one we were saying to Speedway, um, who would receive it. Um, and it was, I, it was my impression. I, I looked back on the video to double check. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think any trustee said that we were gonna put this right away until we seen everything from Speedway when they put everything they promised. Uh, so that was point number one. But point number two, if you look, I, are we eliminating the three gaming licenses? Because I'm seeing a strike. Was that a typographical error? Did you see that too, Trustee Bolton? I'm seeing a strike. I think that was a typographical error because I asked about that one. Okay. Um, so, in, uh, in my position, I know this is for Speedway. Um, I'm just asking that we table this until Speedway continue to deliver. And it's, it's, I'm sorry, but uh, Miss Millie and already made it a point. It's not like the residents are not paying attention to what the board of trustees are doing. So um, I just would like to table for now. Um, uh, if not, I, I'm just letting you know where my stance is going to be because the residents are asking us to hold um, Family Dollar and Speedway accountable in our town for the way and the condition that the facilities look. So, you, so Mayor, you so, know what? So, so it wouldn't be difficult. I, I, you did clarify. I'll make a motion that we table this first, second, and third reading of extending it to of the B and G license. Um, and I'm quite sure you will find out, Mayor, uh, but I motion to table until Speedway finish with uh, they promise to deliver the residents of University Park. And, and, okay, because I didn't think that this was this. Well, I know one of them would be probably for sit before Speedway. But the whole thing is when we're going to do it, we're going to just do two at a time because there's some potential other gaming facilities coming in. So it will be the board's pleasure to determine which way you want the guys want to go. Yeah, and, and, and Mayor, and I'm, even, I'm, even though if we pass this, that still doesn't entitle Speedway any of them anyway. They still have to do their part. So by not passing this, that doesn't prohibit them from doing anything. So passing this, we still don't have to give them a license. If we don't want to give them a license, they don't comply. Past it still gives us the ability to deal with other people in case they want to still come and do business in the community. But that would be the purpose. That, that's if true. If Speedway is fortunate enough to get one and do what they're supposed to do, then they'll, they'll be entitled to one. Yeah, that, that's true. But you know what, Mayor? It's time to pe for, the, for these businesses to know that this board is serious about when we say we're going to do something, we're going to do it. And, and they're sitting right here. and. I'm, I'm, I'm making a motion that we table it, and once they do it, Mayor, I just ask that you go ahead and put it back on agenda, and, and we get passage of it. Well, let's see what the pleasure of the board is, Trustee. But do we want to hold up all the rest of? I don't. For things that's still coming, like he said, if even if they, they may not even get one of these licenses. But why would we hold it up for other businesses coming up? For other? We still control. Them. Just well, a question. Well, well, yeah, yeah, and and yeah, and that was a question I did ask, and and um, at the committee of the whole, it was said that Speedway was one of them, and and I think uh, uh, as trustees, we have the power of the vote, 
And I think that one resident stood up tonight and said that why are we always bargaining and so forth. I think uh, one way to show it is our voice, which is our vote. And um, when we see the deliveries um, on, from this motion I'm asking, I just feel we put it back on the agenda and we vote yes to expand to give them the uh, liquor license to pour as well as the gambling license. Question. Well, just clarity, so I just want to make sure I'm clear and understand. So if we, if we pass this, there is no stipulation that Speedway has to get this liquor license. Is that correct? Correct. There's no language in the ordinance that um, dedicates one of the licenses to Speedway in any, any way, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and trustee, and I, and I understand, I don't, want you, I don't want to confuse you on your vote. It's just that Speedway came up here and, and I specifically asked which one is asking for this license. Because say, for instance, three businesses come here. You voted for two leases already for two businesses that you know. So your knowledge of the businesses that are coming here, you know, you, you will be aware of. But uh, tonight, uh, your vote would express how serious you are about Speedway coming and they want the gaming license and they want the Class B license that you voted on. And we don't have anything coming right now unless, unless the mayor you know, said so, but I did ask for clarity at the Committee of the Whole and Speedway was mentioned. So uh, this is just my point of view, the constituents, especially one who just stood up here tonight, that we show that we're serious, that we'll change our ordinance for you if you want to come to our town. But first, you have to do exactly what is asked of you. Uh, and the residents are tired of seeing certain conditions of villages in this town. We're always giving away, but nothing in return. All right, there's a motion on the floor. Because I tell you one thing, they won't get it because I'm the liquor commission. I won't sign on anybody's license if they're not right. So All right. that's our safety on that one. All right. My question is, is that my concern, really not a question, but my concern is if we have the liquor license is sitting here and we pass this today and the mayor is the liquor commissioner and he tells Speedway no, if Speedway is not in compliance with what we're asking them to do, why would we have for our development? with other other entities that may want to come to our community. So why would we allow Speedway to hijack us with other developments coming into our community to keep us from where we're trying to go or where we're trying to get, and that's to increase revenue. So I feel that we need to vote this in, and, and the mayor has, has just stated that he will not allow Speedway to have a legal liquor license until they're compliant with what it is the residents and this board is asking them to do. So. Mayor, can I be refreshed? Yes, Trustee. Uh, we had a lot of demands on Speedway, and uh, Speedway seems to comply with our demands. All the demands that I put in that Speedway complied with, and I think Speedway is going to hold up the end of the bargain regardless. So. I think that they're making progress in this in this realm. So um, I'm going forward and they're showing good faith. Thank you. Okay. All right. The way we're going to do, Trustee Brooks. I'm sorry. Do you want to keep your motion? Uh, you know what, Mayor? Um, no. I, I agree, Trustee. No, it, I, I'll, I'll express how I feel. I already said how I feel. Um, but let me correct you. Uh, uh, Trustee uh, Jenkins Bell, uh, we're not hindering anybody. Let's get that together. Let's get that point straight. What I ask, what's, what's being asked here is not hindering anything. Uh, someone comes in, and if they are a business in reference to um, uh, porn liquor and in reference to gambling, and they fit all the criteria that, that this village uh, says they can come in no matter what it is, and I'll say it again, that this board agreed that we will do it and we will vote for it. 
So tonight is not hindering. So my point is, is that when it comes down to Speedway, it was specifically said that they were one of the people who were coming for this license. So uh, when I see this question at least being touched, that question was asked tonight, the answer was no, but my partner on the end, if he wants to do it, I won't, he votes yes, I'm not going to hate him or disregard him or disown him, it's just his opinion. The people who voted for him, voted for him. The people who vote for me, vote for me. I represent University Park, he represents University Park. Maybe it was somebody who uh, uh, did not like what you know was said and he said he would vote for it. Uh, a congressman told me never ask a politician why you voted a certain way. And that was after a Republican uh, voted uh, a pro-choice. Uh, pro so you never ask a politician why you vote a certain way. Uh, we here to represent the people. We never know why we vote because it may hit home. So, no, Mayor, I, I yield up, strike that motion. Uh, we can vote up and down. Uh, the board, pleasure. Roll we'll, we'll call, Madam Clerk. So the, the motion, the table was withdrawn? Yes, ma'am. The, mo the motion, yeah, there was no second. The motion has been withdrawn. We go to regular reading. Roll we'll call, Madam Clerk. Trustee Williams? Both side. Trustee Brooks? Both no. Trustee Jenkins? Vote side. Trustee Franklin? Vote side. Trustee Bolton? Vote side. Trustee McMullen? Vote side. Mayor Rudez? Vote side. Item F2E, a resolution providing guidance and direction pertaining to recreational cannabis use within the Village of University Park. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Trustee Brooks? Second. Second by Trustee Bolton. Roll call. Trustee Williams? Vote side. Trustee Brooks? Vote side. Trustee Jenkins? Both sides. Trustee Franklin? Both sides. Trustee Bowler? Both sides. Trustee McMullen? Both sides. Mayor Rudez? Both sides. Item F2F, a resolution approving and authorizing execution of an agreement for medical, dental, and vision insurance benefits. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Trustee Brooks. Second. Second by Trustee McMullen. Questions? Roll call. Both sides. Trustee Brooks. Both sides. Trustee Jenkins. Both sides. Trustee Franklin. Both sides. Trustee Bolden. Both sides. Trustee McMullen. Both sides. Mayor Rudez. Both sides. Resolution passed. Item F2G, a resolution authorizing intervention in a property tax assessment appeal proceeding. Is there a motion? So moved. Sir. Question? Uh, Mayor, is this one of the, the properties over there that's trying to kind of get over on the, the 10th or? Yeah, yeah. Let, let, yeah. Let, let me explain a little bit in case people aren't aware of what's going on. When one of these companies in the industrial park apply for a reassessment and they get their value dropped or their tax rate dropped by $100,000 or $200,000, then it falls on the burden of the village and the taxpayers. And a lot of times they do these things, they file for these appeals. So what we're asking in this thing is asking our attorneys to intervene and fight their uh, assessment because we don't want to be swallowing a $200,000 loss and put it on the burden of our taxpayers. And this probably has happened a lot more frequently than we realize that they apply for assessment. I think it's 2400 Crossings Road, they asked for a $200,000 decrease. You know, who's going to make that up? So that's what this ordinance is about. They can't do it. They, they right, right. To intervene, yes. Because of, without intervention, because they're actually supposed to contact the tax body when this process goes forward. But for some reason, the last 18 months or years down the line, they have not contacted anybody and they will file for, for an appeal or an assessment. And it's granted without those contestants. So now we're going to be contesting every one of those people in the industrial park that's applying for these uh, massive reductions. Okay. Okay. Roll call. Trustee Williams? Both sides. Trustee Brooks? Both sides. Trustee Jenkins? Both sides. Trustee Franklin? Both sides. Trustee Bolton? Both sides. Trustee McMullen? Both sides. Mayor Rudez? Both sides. That's, that's how we watch the tax dollars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Resolution passed. Thank you. Item F2H, 
motion and approve to remand the text amendment regarding cigar lounges back to the Planning Commission for further, further consideration. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Brooks, uh, second by Trustee Bowling. Questions? Uh, Mayor, so the new uh, commissioner that we just appointed would uh, be able to uh, settle the dispute that ever it was? Okay. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Okay, thank you. Roll call. Trustee Williams? Both sides. Trustee Brooks? Both sides. Trustee Jenkins? Both sides. Trustee Franklin? Both sides. Trustee Bolden? Both sides. Trustee McMullen? Both sides. Mayor Rivera? Both sides. What was the dispute? Oh, they had a, they had a tie in, in the planning commission, and they were one member short. There was a tie, but... Well, Ms. Morgan, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm not going to, you know, carry on, do it this way. Okay. Bills payable, attached for your approval is a listing of general operating fund expenses for the village of University Park that incurred the 25th of September 2019 to the 22nd of October 2019. General fund, 169664 cents. Road and bridge, 4172 dollars Town Center Fund, 18726 Payroll, 3192 with a grand total of 195748 Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Brooks. Uh, second by Trustee uh, Shirley Bowden. Questions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Madam Village Manager, uh, this would be uh, for Madam Clerk under page two, check 104485, IRH developments, audit prep work, $8,233.62. What the heck did they do? I thought we were done all that money we gave them. Uh, what, what did they do or is this a back bill? Do we, somebody? Um, that was check 104-485 to IRH Developments for audit prep work, Six hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars. Did they get that in full? We we paid. I'm not, we paid all that, right? So this would be for that work that he came up here. Uh, what's his name? Rogers or what? Whatever that old guy. I mean, uh, the older gentleman, mature gentleman, very mature gentleman. Um, <laughs> Hey, All right, the very seasoned IRH worker that came up here and said, he gave us the report, and he said that it was an August of 2018 work that they were going to prepare. Is that what he's, is, is this that, that, that little work right there? You, you think? Make sure that we have a proper meeting. Dot our eyes. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Question. Yes. Was this recently submitted? Yes, it was. Okay. And so on the previous one invoices that we paid, the prep work was not including it. Never mind, you just said you're going back and, and, and investigate. Okay. This is a recent invoice that was submitted to, to our office. 
So I will do diligence to find out what we are preparing for before it's being Oh. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, just a quick question. Which which do we they what kind of, do we know which artist that they, they did the preparation for is it or what you know, they were doing everything. Um, this is just one of their bills though, right, that they had submitted. Okay. All right. Um Check number 104-419. Would this so happen to be, uh, we got an email for Harold, West, Harold Washington College. Yes, uh, I got an email, uh, a Summers. Would this be that check? Okay, so that's one complaint gone. Um, that was the last page, page, Oh, wait a minute, it says page one. But then we have two page ones. So it would be, it would be, it, it would be, check after that page three. So what's the check number again? 104, 419, that would be the 2019 scholarship receipts, recipient, uh, uh, but they just didn't have the name on there. And we got, and that was an email complaint. Yeah. What was it for, please? It's a student. It was a student. Okay. Um, a, a little clarity here. This was a little odd. 104, 506, our attorneys. I know we had two months of twenty-seven and twenty-eight thousand dollar bills, but how did we get? I just want to make sure I'm looking at this right. September paid for August work only one thousand eight hundred eighty-eight dollars. Were they at work? <laughs> that's on page two. Make sure that's not a typo or something. Uh, 104, 506. It's about towards right after the working bill. What was the amount, sir? One thousand eight hundred eighty-three dollars and zero cent. Miss Morgan, would you please, please? Thank you. Please, about my tax yes, ma'am. That's mm -hmm. our bill here. It's probably for, for some partial work. Okay. Okay. Right, because they've been busy. I just want to make sure. Right, right. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, then I want to jump on, because we sent out some nice newsletters, but this post office. The check 104-424 on page one, and they charged us four ninety nine. dollars 99 I, I want to see my picture when we was at Family Fleet. We didn't get one. It was a whole on that south end. I think a lot of us that live on that south end didn't get it. I know it's not much, and I we don't pay for the postage, but I, I, it just bothered me that we sent out some letters, and they didn't, we didn't, we didn't get any. Yeah, yeah. Right. And uh, just quick checking on is the the National League Conference is the three hundred dollars or that just is that part of the fees or is that travel expenses that we taking out of our account? From our account, right? From our forty six hundred. Okay. All right. All right, uh, I yield my time, Mayor. Roll, roll call, Madam Clerk. Trustee Williams? Roll side. Trustee Brooks? Pass. Trustee Jenkins? Roll side. Trustee Franklin? Roll side. 
from the Baldwin? Both sides. From the McMullen. He's on time out. Vote side to pay the bills. Abstain. I'll go first. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me let me get to my notes first. Wait, hold on, hold on. No, don't hit, don't hit it yet. Don't hit the timer yet. All right. Set. Go. All right. Everyone, I would like to say. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to wish everyone uh, when it comes to Halloween that's coming up. I want everyone to be safe. Uh, children, feel free to come by. I'm always having candy. Most of my football players are too cool to come by the house now. They're turning 16, 18, and out. And uh, so feel free to stop by Trusty Brooks' house. Um, I would like to give my condolences to Vanita Martin. Roosevelt Martin, they are on our planning and also finance, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Vernita, mom, passed, so my heart goes out to them and their family and prayers. Also, we received some sad news. Uh, the mayor and I were uh, at the 2020 census uh, uh, visiting that committee today. And uh, Steve, for those who know, I don't have Steve last name, the gentleman, uh, the that deals with our water, for aqua water, had a heart attack today and died. Yes, yes, Steve, yes, he passed away. Um, so, uh, the, we, were, we were stunned, the mayor and I were standing right here just stunned. Um, so, prayers go out to his family, I'm quite sure. Uh, they got a, he was in Florida, by the way, on vacation today, on a golf course. Yes. Uh, uh, lastly, I would like to, well, next to last, I would like to thank uh, Director Durrell. There was a light out, and uh, I thanked him earlier today when I was uh, on my way to the mayor's office to meet with him today, and um, I want to thank you and your crew. I totally forgot, but I was out there, some branches was smacking me in the face in one of the yards of my residence that I, uh, I cut her yard, and um, it was a nice big bush, and I'm thinking, okay, this can be firewood. And then I heard your chipper rolling, and at the same time, your crew was out fixing lights. And I said, hey, man, take care of me. And so they did it, and they did it right away. So I would like to thank you for what you and your crew do. I don't think the residents know. Um, yes, Miss Miss Millie, we will do our best with this budget. Um, like I said to many people that, two minutes left? Oh man, one, okay. Um, I would like to thank, uh, you know, what you guys do, but um, uh, Madam Village Manager, she's uh, working things out for this budget, but I can tell you, look, I will be glad when the one tip is expired so that money can come in and there is no tightening of the belt like we have been doing. Uh, I also want to congratulate the two officers. Um, it was a punch in my stomach two years ago, so Chief, I'm glad you got somebody out there. Um, I worked hard for those days. Um, calluses in our hands, you just steady jumping at 21 calls a day. She, she knows what I'm talking about. Those are nightmares, so um, just want to say, you know, I am hope that everything works out right because we're going to try to get you two more. And I sat with the mayor and the village manager. So we're going to get things done. We're moving slowly. It just asks the people to be patient. But all the little kids, I talked to Santa. He's coming after Halloween. <laughs> yes. 
So thank you, and uh, again, again, once again, have a safe, safe, safe Halloween and watch a good scary movie. Okay. Hello, mm. Mayor. Yes, Mayor. Tru yes, yes, Trustee. Mayor. Absolutely. I'd like to say, give my greetings to the Martin family. I'm really sorry for that. I don't have a, a long conversation to say tonight. I want to say happy Halloween to everybody. I also want to say thank you, Mayor. It does look better when you come into this center. The blue that you got painted, you're thinking about things, and that's good. Keep up the good work. I want to say to the manager, I think you're doing a good job, especially when I had that incident over at in, uh, Thornwood House. I'm sorry. And then Russell. Russell Oaks, where you got that dog, you found the dog, you found the person that was responsible for the dog, and you took care of business. That was a very bad accident. And thank you for reaching out to do that job for us. All right, that's my conversation. Thank you so much, Trustee. Amen. Trustee? Uh, I would like to send my condolences to the Mark family as well, and also to one of our aqua workers who I know exactly who he is and my heart goes out to his family. Um, I want to say that last Wednesday, I thank Ms. Neva and Ms. Keeley for inviting me to speak to the third graders here in, in from Coretta Scott. One of our trustees' daughter was there. She's just as gorgeous as can be. And I had a wonderful time with the children, with the mayor, with the building manager, and also our treasurer. And I just wanted to let you guys know they're eager, they're excited, and it was just a wonderful experience. And they asked me one thing, what was I going to do for Google Farm? And I, was, I said, we're going to get it open. And they said animals. I said, wow. So, <laughs> so it was just, it was a joy. And my, with my blessings from the mayor and also the village manager, I had an idea to allow that class to come up with a suggestion box. You know they do arts and crafts when they're young like that. And we can have it here and some of the residents could put in suggestions on what they would like to see done in Regal Farm. You know, because it takes a village, it takes a community, and that's what we're working toward and what we're trying to achieve. And I just wanted to say we're, we're doing the best we can up here with you guys. We're all trying to get along. We're gonna, I would say this in Madden Clerks, D. Jones, we're gonna communicate collaborate, and we're going to compromise. So that's all I have to say this evening, and thank you. Anybody else? Trustee? Yes, I would like to uh, congratulate all the football players that play for the University Park Alliance program this year. We had two levels that made it to the semifinals. We also have two levels that are going to be participating in the Midwest uh, Championship Tournament in Crown Point, Indiana. I want to wish, wish everyone good luck in that. Uh, our cheerleaders will be competing in two cheer competitions coming up one Saturday and one the following Saturday. So I just want to wish the young ladies, the young lion ladies, uh, good luck. And just know that everyone is behind you. And um, last but not least, I just want to say God bless the Village of University Park. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee. Tr Trustee Shirley? Yes. I just want to also send my condolences to the Martin family and to the Aqua family, and to have a uh, safe Halloween. Thank you. Trustee Curtis? I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would like to thank um, our new village manager because we seem to be uh, taking uh, a, a lead from the other villages and we're doing well. We're doing extremely well. Matter of fact, every time I get an opportunity, I stop by the village hall and uh, the village manager is always inviting me in and she always telling me, hey, this is what we're working on. And I really appreciate that. I really do. And um, yesterday, none of you know this, but you know, I took off yesterday to have dinner work done, but the mayor called me in over and we are actually, yesterday was the time that uh, Netflix started a movie in our town. They wanted to utilize the, uh, the police office uh, 
of interrogation for their uh, scene in a movie yesterday. So we might be put on the map. So we're going to be. Yes, sir. And I appreciate that, Mayor. Thank you for the invite, and uh, I really enjoyed myself. And uh, then again, thank you for the village manager and all of that she does for this village. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Ms. Uh, uh, Trustee. Would you give a uh, Claudia the microphone? Uh, uh, Chief. Hello. Okay. We had a, uh, was the village is starting their uh, census committee, and we had a meeting today at 11:30, and we're going to do a kickoff. And we want everyone in the village to come over and we want you to know that we need to be counted in this village because if, if each person is not counted we lose hundred and sixty four dollars a year for ten years so we need to count every man woman and child in this village and we want everyone to realize there's only ten easy questions that you have to answer and that's all so we're going to do a kickoff here December 5th at 530 we want everyone to come out and join us and help us get the word out. Also, for Halloween, the Mayor's Office of Special Events is having a Halloween party here in um, 90 Town Center from five to eight. We're gonna have games, we're gonna have trick or treats, and we want everyone to come out and bring your children to a safe Halloween party. Thank you. Thank oh, you very the much. Age range, oh, I'm sorry, age range is up to 13. Good evening, everybody. Um, I just wanted to announce that for the Halloween season, I just want to remind everybody about the safety. Um, if parents are going to be taking the younger children out, it's a good idea to drive with them or to walk with them. If you're driving, you got to curb your vehicle all the way to the side. Okay, um, depending on what the weather is like. A lot of times we have the um, teenage kids out with the full. Mm -hmm. face masks on and stuff okay I just don't want anybody to be victimized if you're making um, we've had a lot of this lately if you're having if you're making some sort of arrangements to purchase something gym shoes or radio whatever drive to the front of the police department on the camera don't meet them in the parking lot where you will get held up okay please don't do that don't allow yourself to be victimized also um, the trick-or-treat hours, the official trick-or-treat hours are from 3 to 7. It's on Thursday. Curfew will be enforced at 1030 because it's a weekday. So it will be enforced 1030 at night. So everybody, please be safe. I also wanted to extend my condolences to the Martin family and also um, to Aqua and um, um, Steve's family. Uh, uh, Chief, one, one, one quick moment. I've got a couple of questions from residents. Would you just give them a, a parking notification to our apartment since we're coming into the snow season? Yes. The regular parking, there is no parking. Our parking is prohibited on every street within the village limits between the hours of 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. Okay, unless you have a, a, um, an exemption. Everybody can't have an exemption. You get exemptions for if your driveway is being redone, if you're having a party, something like that. You call, uh, we will document your information, and the sergeant or the officer in charge will go ahead and verify that, pass that on. Just call our dispatch center and they'll pass that information on. Uh, other than that, if there is an excess of two inches of snowfall, make sure that your vehicles are not parked on any street. If there's more than two inches of snowfall, Okay, we will attempt, we may attempt, if we have the uh, availability, to come and knock on the door if it's somebody who lives local. But if it's somebody like you know, a vehicle from Chicago Heights out here visiting and we don't know where you live or whatever, then more than likely we're going to hook the vehicle. Okay, we have to tow it so that our uh, uh, Department of Public Works can get down the streets. Okay, and we don't want to plow around it. We're not going to move that. We're just going to tow the vehicle. So be mindful of that and make sure that you notify your guests. Okay, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact the police department. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bythe, anything? Good evening, Mayor, uh, Board of Trustees, Village Manager Ernest D. B. Beck Focal. I would like to <laughs> thank you, you know, uh, welcome you to the team. Uh, in our public works department, we are at the end of our uh, our branch chipping season. Uh, we have two, one more Monday. Uh, after next Monday, 
Uh, that's it for the branch uh, pickup season. Uh, so if you have any branches you want to get out, make sure you get them out on next Monday because after that, I believe code enforcement will be uh, giving out fines if you have branches out and the season is over with. Again, I would like to give my condolences to the Martin family. And again, let's have a safe and happy uh, candy season. And uh, God bless the border, University Park, and God bless America. I got a question for you. Just looking out from the window. Where are you is all the equipment ready for the winter? Do we have enough salt? Yeah. Uh, everything's working on. If it snows tomorrow, we got enough trucks out there, and they're working. Yeah, yes. We don't yes. need repair. Everything is no, ready. No, no. Uh, well, some of our trucks we are having repaired now. Okay. But uh, me and the village manager, we have been assessing uh, my equipment down there. And uh, I would like to pass that baton to her. <laughs> okay, so first of all, very quickly. Oh, first of all, something we had to have right away. One of the first assignments, in addition to all the other assignments, is that he had to come up with a snow removal plan. I want it done by area. So he brought in schematics, laying it all out. I said, that's, that's great. Now he is completing the narrative. We have the snow, uh, I mean the, the uh, contract approved by the board for the salt. The first day that we have snow removal, we're going to have them ready, Johnny on the spot. They're going to deal with major stopping areas, major streets, thoroughfares to make sure it's salted. One of the other things we talked about is equipment. We want to make sure all equipment is updated, repaired, and ready the first day, 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, they're out there before the work group gets off. We've talked about that, we continue to talk about that, and he knows our conversation about that. Okay, while I got that, let me just say one thing, you don't have to give me any more. Police department, police department, we communicate a lot. That's all I can say about that. We, do. we communicate a lot. And like I told um, Ms. Wilson, um, that I just disregard all whatever she just has to prove what's going on and happening. So what we decided to do, I met with the chair of the Police and Fire Commission Board. We're going to, I'm going to recommend in the budget to the board, that we hire two new police officers, that we hire two public works employees, that we replace the two fire persons that are leaving. One is leaving for another job and one is retiring, and that we hire another code enforcement officer. All our major problems are coming. And I think if we get these people in place, we can begin to demand even more from employees. In addition, uh, the police department is going to re-enact the investigative unit. We have to make sure that there are enough people on the street. I've been amazed. I've been around, but since I've been here going on four weeks, there have been more incidents in this one particular town that I've seen in communities for a year. It just blows my mind. And they're solving them, but the key is we got to have an investigative unit that's going to really be effective out there and Johnny on the spot. And, and also we're looking, you know, bring these two police officers that help in this. So that is, is it. The fire department, uh, Mayor and I have gone around, I do my little looking early morning, but in the fire department I went to station two and it just blew my mind over in station two. One of the things that we're looking at and we've discussed is we're going to look at possibly locating um, fire station two further in the industrial uh, development area. That would allow major access that they can get to it faster because of all the chemicals and these kinds of things. And you got to look at that. And then look at the, where fire station number two is. We're going to want to bring another end to public works so they can do more coal patching. 
so they can do more street work, other kinds of things. So we want to put that in place. These are just preliminary plans that we're looking, but believe us, we're going to try to step by step get all this in place, and then it's a better service delivery. Isn't that what we're in business for, to service delivery to the community? Madam Manager, can uh, you elaborate on a new location for the firehouse too, because you and I talked about the disrepair of the fire station too. Will this help in that aspect of it? Yes, we're going to have to repair the doors. It's amazing that they've been able to stay all these years with, like they used to do in, in down the south. Pure OD water coming through the door and having to tape up the door and water coming through and hinges. It's, it's amazing. I don't know how it could have been there. And people sleep there at night. Could you imagine what happens in the wintertime? There's some major cold violations that we should probably give our own selves problems with. So, so in talking we're looking into uh, new arrangements for them, right? Ab ab absolutely. We're, we're, we're working on that. Too. Thanks, Trustee. You know, when I'm at work I, every day, and the village is in good hands. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank well, you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything, anything, Chief Chelios? Maybe some fire safety tips or something, please. Yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's going to be a few weeks before we're back here in this room again, so I want to make sure to remind everyone, uh, November 3rd, Sunday, is the time change for daylight savings. So the motto is, change your clocks, change your batteries, and your smoke alarms. If anyone needs assistance at all with changing or checking smoke alarms or batteries, you can call the fire department's non-emergency number, which is 708 Two three five forty eight twenty one, and we will be glad to offer any assistance that we can. Uh, it's been mentioned already once tonight that I heard, uh, but the season is changing as well. And I myself had a close encounter with a deer on my way here this evening. The deer are back in the area, so especially driving through the forest preserve areas, please be on the lookout and uh, slow down a little bit, especially driving at night to give your time self and time to see them coming. Uh, that's that's it. Uh, that's all I have for the evening. Oh, oh okay. Now, ma'am, you really gonna challenge me because I really don't like to feel questions from the audience, but I haven't seen you in a board meeting, so I'm gonna extend it to you this time. You just scare me <clears throat> talking about the deers. I know that on my way back towards the school, I'm not from around here. What what are, where what is the closest route? So 57 from here. We'll tell you after the meeting, no problem. Thank you. All right, no problem. All right, and my report, I'll make it real brief. Thank you, everybody, for working so hard because we've been on one mission now. We're stronger together than we've ever been before. One vision, one village. Thank you. Is there a motion for adjournment? So okay. okay. uh, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, he might have to look out for that.